Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd love to do a book review for you. The book that I would love to do today is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I've been trying to get that name right so many times, it's unreal. This book, it says at the bottom here, one of the most influential novels of the 20th century, a stunning book. I would probably agree with that. This book, it starts off, we meet the narrator. The narrator is a young woman, probably in her young 20s, if even that, and she she's never named, but we find out that she works, she's a travelling companion for an old rich lady, and they go on all these lovely places together. Including, they travel to Monte Carlo, where they end up meeting this lovely, rich, older gentleman named Maxim de Winter. The old lady's heard about him, she makes a point of herself to introduce herself to him and you never know, just for the sake of it. He lost his wife quite a while ago. He ends up taking a liking to our narrator and they begin spending more time together and that sort of thing and she begins to like him and then he asks to marry her so she's like yeah why not and they get married. It's only really when they go back to the house which is the famous Mandalay Maxim de Winter and Mandalay, they sort of, they go hand in hand. Everybody knows them, everybody loves them. It's a big famous house that she'd been dreaming of for ages, big estate. The narrator feels uncomfortable because she's always been poor. This is a whole new life for her. Suddenly she's rich, she's got money, she's got servants, and she tries to strike up a balance. But while Mandalay, she finds traces of Maxim's previous wife, Rebecca, hence the title. Now, Rebecca, she ends up sort of haunting the story, not like a ghost, sort of a physical presence, but more memories of her. So you find the narrator finding things like, for example, a book that is signed for Maxim, signed with love, Rebecca. And she begins to wonder about this Rebecca. What was she like? How did she treat him? That sort of thing. And she gets into his writing office at one point and she finds it just the way that Rebecca would have loved it, including her little writing desk and her coat stand and everything. And she begins to think, she begins to imagine as if Rebecca is still here. Of course, it doesn't help as well that in the story, Whenever the narrator asks Maxim about Rebecca, he just completely shuts down. He refuses to talk about her completely, which just adds interest. Why, why won't he talk about her? Does he still love her? Is that the thing? Is he still grieving over her? Does he really love our narrator, his second wife, if he's still grieving over his first? That's when uncertainty starts to settle in, really. She manages to get along with the serpents really. She's got this whole new life and she is striking up a balance. But there's this one servant who is openly devoted still to Rebecca. And she clashes with her, to be fair. She does, they have little arguments and there's a couple of things without giving too much the plot away. Uh, one character tricks another and they have a few quarrels and one so big that it even nearly ends the story there for one character. So about maybe half the way through the book, a ship full of sailors crashes into the cliffs by Mandalay and naturally the alarm goes off and all that and they hear it and they come out running and they help the sailors. The sailors confess that they found the ship that Rebecca used to sail in all the time and inside the ship they found a body. But Maxim identified Rebecca's body months ago. So whose body is it? And that leads into so many other plot twists and turns and everything like that. I would say this book, or this story rather, is it's certainly a mystery, but it's also a love story. A love story of how a young woman who is very sort of um, uncertain of herself and very 
be, before Maxim, all she knew really was this that she was a travelling companion for this older lady, and that's that was her life. You know, she never really thought of anything more. So now she loves this this new guy, new older, richer guy. And really, it's just a story of this young woman that falls in love with a rich older man, and she loves him dearly, but then she also admires him and that love just deepens. She ends up that she would do anything for him. Even if it wasn't quite right, she'd still do it for him. Now, I have to admit, the start of this book does require patience. It really does. It's, I mean, it's not like The Girl on the Train, which was a fantastic story. It's not like The Girl on the Train in that they sacrifice meals, sleep, children, to keep turning those pages. It's not like that. It can be seen as slow. I've seen comments online that say, oh, you know, when is it gonna get good? And I'm on page 14 or whatever, and it's very slow and all that sort of thing. But to be honest, it's worth it if you just stick in there. The main point for me that stood out in this book, and the main point that stays with me, is how relatable the narrator was. We've all had times where we have felt like a fish out of water, whether it be through youth, inexperience, new surroundings, anything. We've all felt, felt like that at one point or another. And because we can relate so much to that, we end up that we care about the character. We care about what happens to her and how she feels. Well, before I read this story, I had heard from other people how much of a classic it was and how it's one of these ones that would um, it, it's one of these ones that would enrich your life if you read it. I still enjoy the story, but I do feel that it could have picked up a little bit more in the beginning, or a little bit faster rather. However, should it have been shorter? Probably not. Because I feel that you need to have known about the history of the narrator and you need to have experienced all those times when Rebecca was haunting Maxim and still feel her presence around Mandalay to enjoy the end plot twist and to really relate to the character. In conclusion, I would recommend this book to anybody. It's a classic that will make the reader feel like they're not alone with these feelings. It's really easy to pick up another book by this author. If you have any book recommendations for me, please, I'd love to hear them. Um, it could be a Daphne du Maurier book or it could be another book. What are you reading at the moment? Please let me know, I'd love to know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love any comments that you would provide. Love to hear your thoughts. Hear your thoughts on Rebecca, if you've read it. If not, go and check it out, it's fantastic. And I'll see you in the next video.